Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics in this video. I'd like to draw a distinction between the Conservative government that Boris Johnson is running and the idea of a government, though, though it might be philosoph philosophically incompatible with me, would nonetheless seek to govern wisely. And it's this distinction that is potentially creating a huge disconnect between the Conservatives right now and their core supporters. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this week, I've talked about a couple of government avoidance tactics, deliberately designed to avoid having to govern. The first is regarding Brexit. I pointed out that many economists say that one of the UK's major problems right now is that the government don't actually have an economic plan. So it's irrelevant whether you can argue whether it's a good plan or not a good plan, or even if it's a good plan, is it the best plan? There isn't one at all. It doesn't exist. My response to this is that the government cannot afford to have an economic plan. An economic plan needs an investigation into the problems causing our economy to stall. Such an investigation would point out how Brexit, particularly this extreme Tory Brexit, is holding us back. An economic plan would not find a way around these Brexit barriers either. It would conclude that the barriers need to be dismantled with all haste. So because taking economic strategy seriously means having to face up to the sabotage of that Conservative government against their own country, there will not be one. Then in Prime Minister's questions, opposition MPs were tackling the Prime Minister over action against the rising cost of living. Now, I want to point something out here. Obviously, the various political parties in the UK will agree about some things and disagree about others. It is possible that what some parties see as a problem, the party of government doesn't. However, no party considers a cost of living that is rising well above the level of income growth to not be a problem. So we start from the position that all political parties represented in Westminster, including the Conservatives, consider that high inflation is a problem. I have certainly not heard the leadership of any UK political party arguing otherwise. So at the point at which different political parties agree that something is a problem, the differences will be in how to solve it. Now, on this point, you would absolutely expect the right-wing Conservative Party to suggest different solutions to the left-wing Labour Party or the SNP, for example. But a Conservative government that was actually trying to govern would nonetheless less do something about it. They would have a plan. Boris Johnson's doing nothing. He was asked six times by Angela Rayner and twice by Ian Blackford and other times by other MPs what he was going to do about the serious rise in the cost of living that was inevitably going to plunge more people into poverty. On each and every occasion, Boris Johnson said he was going to do nothing more. He said what he was already doing and he even lied about that. For example, saying that some people were receiving payments of £140 a week to help with the energy bills when it was £140 a year. But his only responses were what he was already doing. Now, that would be fine if the Conservatives were trying to argue that high inflation wasn't an issue. But they're not. So given that they accept that inflation above the level of income growth is a serious problem, what do you conclude about a government that has no plans to do anything about it? Because that is what the arguments were about in Parliament this week. Not the Conservatives saying that this plan is the best one and some opposition parties go, no, 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 this other plan is the best one. Because that's normal party politics, you expect that. What we had was the government trying to distract and divert attention from the fact that on no occasion did Boris Johnson have a single proposal, not a single measure, that he was going to implement in order to ease the burden on people who cannot afford a hit to their budget of £100 a month, just for the extra cost of taxation and energy. That's saying nothing, nothing at all about the rising cost of food, fuel and other essentials. Now, if you take John Major, for example, he would be the last Conservative Prime Minister that I would regard as being genuinely trying to govern in a way that I fundamentally disagreed. Were someone like John Major running the government now, he would be announcing measures. I might consider them to be less efficient or something that will just apply a quick fix but not deal with the problem long term. 
This is often what I think of conservative attempts to deal with a serious problem. They have this belief in small government and it, may, it tends them to put in short-term measures only. But people with a conservative mindset would nod along to his proposals, agree with them and go, yeah, yeah, that's the way forward. I think that would work. This is not happening for Conservatives right now, listening to Boris Johnson, because he's not proposing anything. They can't nod along and go, yeah, yeah, that'll work, because he's not saying what he's going to do, because he's not going to do anything. He spent Prime Minister's questions dodging and weaving and coming up with excuses, but not actually proposing solutions. And because there are no solutions, the problems won't go away. One of the major factors, if you'll pardon the pun, that cost John Major the election in 1997 was because he dropped a major economic bollock a few years earlier. When we talk about the Conservatives this year raising taxes by a historic amount, the last time a government raised taxes this much was John Major's government as a result of that economic bollock dropping. People didn't forget that, even though the economy had recovered by the time of the election, technically, they still hadn't forgotten that he'd got them in that position in the first place. 2022 is going to be a year when people see the Conservative government making the same mess. Taxes are rising massively. The cost of essentials is also out of control. There's no plan to deal with it. The government are just going to leave us to it. There are, however, two differences between now and 30 years ago. The first is that the economy is not going to really recover. We will see growth, of course, when you've, you, you've shrunk a lot, of course you're going to see growth. And that percentage growth will look good, but we will be behind comparable economies. And we will continue to lag behind those economies. Our extreme Tory Brexit and complete lack of an economic plan make that certain. It's not an issue for speculation. 2022 won't be an economic cock-up as 1993 was. It will just be the start of the pain train that will not stop. From this point of view, the anger of British voters should be even greater than it was in 1997. But there is a second difference, and one that will work in the Conservatives' favour this time. The main mistake that the Tories made in the 90s was sticking with John Major once he'd lost the public trust. Nobody seriously believes that they're going to make the same mistake with Boris Johnson. Not only have they learned the lesson, but Johnson isn't even well regarded amongst his MPs. They would have felt bad about dropping Major because they respected him. There will be no such qualms with Johnson. Their problem is that, that um, they, re they regard is, is the lack of an obvious successor and the need to wait long enough for Johnson to absorb more of the crap that's coming our way. Like, no point in getting rid of Johnson now and then making the new leader responsible for the rest of 2022, which is going to involve an absolute beasting in the May elections, as well as the economic disaster that is going to be this year. The public will give the new leader, when they arrive, some benefit of the doubt early on, but the pain is going to bite deeply this year. But it's not just swing voters that the Conservatives are losing right now. As we saw in North Shropshire, as well as Chesham and Amersham, actual Conservatives are not minded to vote for the Conservative Party at the moment. And that's because even they cannot see the party as a Conservative Party. It's not doing anything. It's not adopting conservative policies, or at least not the ones they recognise. Conservatives think of themselves as being the safe pair of hands with the economy. I mean, economic data shows the lie there, but most people don't look at that. But there's no pretending right now. The economy is so bad that when a Telegraph writer, as I talked on Friday, tried to say the UK economy had recovered, the best he could do by way of proof was using a graph that shows it hasn't actually recovered at all. Well, that was desperate stuff. Throwing a graph up and hoping nobody would look at it. But many of their core supporters are unhappy right now. Some may not vote for a different party, but they might stay at home rather than actively support the Tories at the next election. As for less partisan Tory voters from recent elections, they may well switch if the Conservatives don't start actually doing something. And they're not showing no signs of actually doing something or even being able to. Because even when Johnson's replaced... Imagine that you put down all the government inaction at the moment to Boris Johnson because he's a terrible procrastinator who doesn't want to do anything. What successor is going to dare to commission a detailed economic plan? What successor is going to actually deliver the Brexit that their supporters expected when they know full well that the consequences will not be what was promised anyway? It is little wonder that the government are expanding 
Um, their only genuine efforts into making sure that the next election is the furthest thing from democratic. That is the only thing they're putting genuine hard work into. They know that they'd have no chance otherwise. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.